Hello and welcome to another edition of What's Next. My name is Aki Anastasiu and in this complicated world where everything is being driven by technology right now, you think about the impact that technology is having, that connectivity is happening, whether this business continuity, continuity would have been uh, successfully allowed and uh, allowing us to communicate in this way and uh, conduct work meetings via Zoom, via LinkedIn, via whatever platform you might be using. Uh, this is the new normal. This is the way we're doing things. So it's a great pleasure to, to welcome Marco Daru, who's the Managing Director of Miro in South Africa. Hello, Marco. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Hi, Aki. Great. Thanks. And yourself? Good, good, good. So just as a way of an introduction, if, if people haven't heard of Miro, uh, what do you guys do? You guys are an essential part in ensuring that the glue of us communicating stays together. So how would you explain Miro to somebody you meet on the street? Yeah, so um, what we do is we, we, enable, we enable people to, to, to get the right technology um, to get connected to the internet. Um, so what we like to call it is uh, um, IP convergence. So uh, anything IP related, uh, we distribute and import, we import and distribute that. And then we supply that to, to local businesses um, like internet service providers, resellers, integrators, um, that type of thing. Okay, fantastic. So how, how has, firstly, um, the, you know, the, the whole lockdown impacted you as a business, you know, with your business continuity and your staff? Have you all been working remotely? I imagine that your warehousing uh, has had to stay open because you've had to distribute your products. But how has uh, Miro South Africa been operating? Yeah, so I think we, we were in the fortunate position to um, be part of the, of the supply chain in the telecoms industry. And that was deemed a essential service from, from, from the get go. Um, so we kind of had to regroup and, and think, think of how we'll, we'll, we'll do this because um, we believe that we, we play an important role in, in, in the supply of hardware. So we changed overnight to, to work from home. Um, it was pretty, pretty smooth because most of our systems are cloud-based already. So our, e, our ERP system, as well as uh, as well as our uh, telephony system, it's based in the cloud. So we basically just told everyone, "You're not coming in tomorrow. You're working from home." We installed uh, all the necessary applications, and um, our workforce was 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 ready to go. Luckily, because of the industry we're in, um, I would say 99% of uh, our staff has got reliable internet at home. Um, yes. So that 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 worked very well. The only area where we had to 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 uh, do a, a different um, approach was with our fulfillment center, um, the distribution and the warehousing of of, of the stock. Um, so there we just um, decreased the amount of people that we have um, on site mm -hmm. at all times, and then just impose all the strict strict measurements to make sure that we. Uh, we so it was pretty seamless uh, well, seamless for you guys, hey Marco. It sounded like you guys had it under control, and it was just a a very easy transition that you had to make. But you speak about the telecoms industry, and that's certainly been the one industry that is transforming at such a rapid rate. Um, and you look at the, uh, you know, the recent announcements that the government has given temporary spectrum to the likes of Vodacom and MTN to operate in the 5G space. Um, and I think that's really an indication of the connectivity demand out there and that people want to be connected. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the telecom sector? Well, I think firstly, um, a, lot, a lot of people didn't realize that they really needed reliable internet at home until the pandemic struck. So either, um, you know, both for, for, for your professional connectivity as well as just for um, in your personal life. If you don't have connectivity at home, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of stuck, um, especially um, if, if, you know, you can't get out in the world. So people now realize that that is a very important part. And we've seen a, a massive spike in demand, especially from, from home users. So uh, a big shift from enterprise connectivity to home connectivity took place. So a lot more uh, consumer grade Wi-Fi, fiber to the home um, is, is really uh, kicking off. Um, it's skyrocketing over the last two months. We can, we're moving a lot of fiber to the home hardware as well as fixed, fixed wireless. Mm -hmm. And LTE. So we, we see a, a transformation there and people are not relying on their mobile uh, data anymore. 
they need that fixed connectivity at home um, in order to really uh, st stay connected. Yeah, and I, I imagine that, uh, Marco, multiple connections as well, because a lot of people are, are saying that, hang on a second, I'm working from home, the kids are doing their, their online, uh, you know, learning from home. Um, there's, you know, somebody's doing an exercise session. So now there's like multiple streams and demands for that data pipe that's coming into the home, which is posing all sorts of interesting challenges. Um, now, which in, in the equipment range, and you mentioned that, you know, the uh, consumer grade stuff and the enterprise grade stuff, what kind of equipment is currently in demand and really is shooting the lights out and which of your equipment range is on its, you know, is not, is showing perhaps a decline? Yeah. Um, so the stuff that's really going is, is the easy to set up um, home uh, solutions, um, especially the mesh, mesh stuff that, that works off an application on your cell phone. And you can prioritize traffic over, over those, those type of systems. Um, so what, what the users do is they would prioritize a specific um, laptop uh, or whatever they used to do their work um, from, and that laptop takes priority over, over the, the TV or the Apple TV or whatever you use to, to, to have the streaming happening in the background. So that's been working well for the customers. So even with that simultaneous connections, the priority is still on the work machine yes. um, during the daytime. Um, so those type of systems where it, it, it's just a mesh ap uh, application, you roll it out throughout your house, have, you've got an application on your cell phone, you just click, 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 say this machine should take priority. And um, also what we've seen is the older Wi-Fi systems based on older technology. Uh, it's not really holding up with all the video conferencing happening. So people had to upgrade to, to, to later uh, versions of Wi-Fi, um, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Okay. Um, and then also... Yeah, just fiber connectivity in general. Um, you know, the, the, the ONUs for, for fiber um, for, uh, used by the service providers to, to terminate the fiber to the houses. Mm. Uh, there, there's a big demand for those. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, I, I feel sorry for anybody that's on an ADSL line during this uh, period. Unfortunately, there are some people that have to use it, you know, that they don't have fiber in their areas. But uh, certainly... I was saying to somebody the other day, can you imagine if this pandemic had happened 10 years ago, um, the speeds that we had 10 years ago, the kind of connectivity that we had then versus what we have now has really allowed for that business continuity to be seamless. But um, it's also been interesting, um, and I'd love to hear your views on this, um, the, 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 the patterns of change, not only from a work environment, but also from the way we conduct our digital lives every day. I mean, e-commerce, for example, um, and, and IP telephony, as you mentioned, um, and the B2B and the B2C business aspects of it. Uh, can you tell us about the, the mix of hardware that uh, your company brings into the picture, in particular, um, talking about the e-commerce platforms that are out there and how that's changing? Because I know that you're also focused on that side of the business as well. Yes. Now, Aki, so what we, we developed over the last couple of months was a, a full-on um, B2B, B2C hybrid e-commerce platform um, for our customers to always, you know, have the information ready to make their, 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 their purchasing decisions, especially for business. Um, now where um, there's less people uh, at the office and there might be a, a, a lower level of service going around because of people working from home. Yes. Um, the e-commerce thing comes in very handy because now, um, Miro customers uh, has got access to all the information. They could see real-time stock and availability. And it's a, it's a B2B system. So you can request a quotation. You can get it put through the same purchasing um, process um, as per usual, but just without the, the waiting times and, 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 and the human interaction. So that system has really changed the way uh, customers deal with us. Um, and we believe that is the future. So e-commerce has always been a B2C thing. But um, there's definitely a lot of room for it in, in, in B2B, in the B2B space. Well, that's awesome stuff. And tell me, Marco, the, the, the supply chain, I know at the beginning of lockdown, there were like no flights. There was a shortage of stock in certain items. Has the supply chain got back to normal? Are you, have you got stock availability of most of the stuff? Are there any shortages that you're still aware of? Yeah, so, so there was definitely a couple of bottlenecks in the supply chain. 
Um, firstly, in, in the manufacturing part, because it, it struck China first. Um, so there was a, a bit of a bottleneck, but luckily we, um, we picked that up very early. So we um, built a, a, a nice fat buffer into our stock holding at the start of this pandemic, and we didn't um, back down. So up until now, we've been, um, it's been very smooth. Supply has been very smooth, and it's, um, it could have gone the, the other way uh, because you know, one doesn't always know uh, which way it's going to go. Should you be conservative or should you, should you be bullish? Um, so we took the, took the bullish um, road, and uh, I think it's paying off. Um, because all our all our business partners um, can can rely on us to always have stock for them. Yeah, that's awesome. And then finally, Marco, I mean, uh, for you personally, I mean, you've you've shared some some of your insights into how your company's been run. Um, but certainly for all of us, I think we're all learning new things about how to do business differently, uh, adapting, uh, reinventing a lot of uh, case studies, for example, and doing things differently with customers, et cetera. What's been your aha moment throughout this lockdown period? And since the start of COVID, in terms of your business, you personally, perhaps, what's been your aha moment? Um, I think that moment must have been uh, the moment when we realized that uh, we are all extremely dependent on the technology that that that, that we find ourselves using, and um, we uh, we're fortunate to be in that business to to actually be the experts in in technology. Yes. And my aha moment was that um, we need to make sure that everyone can transact and continue business without having to physically deal with someone. And that's where this whole e-commerce thing came from. So we built this, this, this B2B e-commerce site. We moved all our trainings um, online. Um, so everything is, is pure, pure online training now. Because the, the, the other issue was um, if, you, if you put a bunch of people in a room together, you know, that's, that's a, a recipe for disaster. Absolutely. Um, but we've moved all of that over online. Um, and I think that going forward, it's not going to ever return back to normal. So we might see a bit of the old world coming back, but um, for our business, um, online and e-commerce and uh, doing things digitally is the future. So it was more of a, a shove into the right direction. That's what it was. It wasn't really a, a no. disturbance in the force. It was just a shove in the right direction quicker. Yeah, that's quite interesting you say that. You know, Some new organizations are talking about how they've had to quickly fast track whatever they plan to do and really come up with new innovations. And certainly the momentum is going forward because as you say, we're certainly not going back to the way things were before. Marco Deru, the Managing Director of Miro South Africa, thank you so much for joining us on What's Next. We wish you well and every success in the future. You're certainly one of the companies to watch because you guys are the glue that keeps us all talking and together, I guess. So networking is the way to go. We'll, uh, we'll watch the space with a great deal of interest. Thank you for your time, Marco. Thanks, Aki. Okay.